What is up my friends, welcome back to another video and today we are taking a look at the tuba, the final instrument in the brass section, a typical standard orchestral lineup. Uh, one of my favorite brass instruments because you don't need very many of them to create a beautiful sound and beautiful support for the rest of the orchestra and it can really stand on its own, kind of like the piccolo, but it's on the other end of the spectrum, obviously. So before we kind of get too deep into it, I want to give you my 10 steps to a clear orchestral sound guide. Again, it kind of walks through the, the core concepts you need to know about the orchestra to really take it, uh, take your mock-ups and your virtual instrument productions to the next level. So including things like mixing and balancing and, and understanding timbres and textures, all of that is condensed down into this guide. So it's totally free if you want to check it in the description box below. Feel free to click the link and I'll take you where uh, to where you can download it right away as my thank you for watching this video. So let's talk about the tuba a little bit. First of all, it's the largest instrument of the brass family. Not that surprising when you think about it. Usually the larger the instrument, the lower it is uh, to play. It kind of has a, a dark and a round tone resulting from the conical bore setup, right? So the the tubing kind of expands as it, as it um, gets longer and longer, and then at the very end, it kind of rounds out. But overall, that creates a warmer, darker tone. The range is from D minus one to G three, and it's pretty comfortable to play throughout the entire range. Um, more or less functions as the base of the orchestra, and occasionally you have solos, like you'll have tuba symphonies, or I mean tuba like concertos or something, right? Uh, every instrument gets a bit of love. So what are some pros and cons to using the tuba? Well, again, it has a very powerful and deep sound. The tone is typically more mellow and quiet, right? Being conical bore, so it fills out the low end in a very rich way. And usually I only use one of them um, in my setup. Like, okay, there we go. Only really need one in most arrangements because again, the the warmth and the overall sound just spills out into the into the orchestra very beautifully. Because of the register and construction though, you typically wouldn't use it for declamatory melodies or brassy moments, right? Because it's warmer in nature, it's not, uh, like it, it can play kind of comical and fun stuff like in marches, but typically you wouldn't use it for like searing sounds, right? Like the trombones or trumpets, if that makes sense. So what are my favorite ways to use brass in general? Um, I love to use them for expressive melodies, especially like French horn and trumpets. Um, playing expressive lines with a bit of vibrato there is just so beautiful. I also like to use them for emphatic and heroic melodies. I'm just thinking of my piece called Path to Freedom. If you listen to that, there's a French horn section playing the first melody there. Uh, you know, really just taking the, the power and just injecting it into the music. So especially with multiple layers, the power of the brass section is unparalleled in its volume and intensity. I truly believe that. Uh, for harmonic patterns, the brass have a very rich tone, allowing for a, a brighter sound even when played in a staccato way, which is really interesting. And finally, I like to use the brass for chordal pads, especially using like French horns and trombones on their quieter dynamics, but all the brass can cre create a warmer and a richer sound, serving as the foundation of the arrangement. So something to keep in mind, it, the brass are quite versatile in that way. They can play louder and brassier stuff, like more anthemic and more, you know, military stuff, right? But they can also easily play quieter and just, uh, you know, more soothing passages as well, depending on what you want to do for them. Keep in mind, they do require air to produce sound, so you will have to make sure there's breathing room and you don't want to write uh, crazy virtuosic lines because even though the higher instruments are kind of flexible, um, the lower ones like the trombone and the tuba aren't as nimble, you know, so you don't want to write crazy, crazy stuff for them. <laughs> Just keep that in mind. So yeah, hopefully that gives you a, a sense of how I like to use the brass section in general, a sense of how I use the tuba and all those other ones as well. If you haven't watched those videos, definitely check them out. And yeah, if you're looking forward to uh, taking your mock-ups to the next level, I want to recommend my 10 steps to a clear orchestral sound guide. Um, it basically takes you through some very important concepts to think about when you're working on uh, virtual instruments and um, how to actually make them sound convincing. I've got, I've basically condensed it all into one video, uh, sorry, one guide, so you can take a look into that and uh, read it very quickly. Thank you so much for sticking with me through this. We'll next move on to the percussion section next week and uh, we'll keep going. Thanks a lot. Take care. Bye-bye.